Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, number 2926, is a class 2900, 484 Northern type, steam locomotive that was built in May of 1944 by Baldwin. The 2900s as a series were built fairly late, between 1943 and 1944, and since they were built during World War II, shortages of the required materials meant that a lot of ordinary metals were used in their construction, as opposed to the usual lightweight stuff that Baldwin would normally implement. As a result, the 2900s are actually the heaviest Northerns ever constructed. They outweigh the second heaviest Northerns by over 2,000 pounds, and they have Timken roller bearings on all their axles. Between 1946 and 1948, they were actually approved for 110 mile per hour speeds with Santa Fe's express passenger trains after being fitted with Timken roller bearing Tamden side rods and they were originally meant to haul passenger trains. But high traffic during the war meant they would also haul fast freight quite often, being responsible for hauling trains like the Chief, the Scouts, and the Grand Canyon Limited. But as dieselization would take over, the whole class was retired by 1959. Though 2926 would actually be retired well before that. She personally would accumulate over 1 million miles of usage before her last revenue run that took place on December 24th, 1953. After that, she'd be removed from service. But 2926 was fortunate. Santa Fe was pretty decent about donating a handful of their steam locomotives for preservation, and in 2926's case, she was given to the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico in July of 1956 to recognize their 250th anniversary, and she was placed in Coronado Park. Yes, indeed, she became a park engine. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it did of course expose her to the elements, which is bad. Park engines can deteriorate at various degrees depending on how well the city decides to maintain them. It varies depending on who's in charge and what the city feels like doing. In 2926's case, however, Albuquerque did take decent care of her from the moment they received her until, incredibly, 1999. It was that year that they decided to, <laughs> well, sell her, but, um, it's hard to call this a sale. See, on July 26, she was sold to the New Mexico Steam Locomotive and Railroad Historical Society for the nominal sum of one dollar. I am 100% certain that there had to be some kind of bureaucratic reason that they had to list a sale price for the thing because a dollar, really? Come on now, you guys were trying to get around something. But I actually applauded on the basis that Albuquerque wasn't looking to profit off the locomotive. Hey, Amarillo, Texas, you still have Madam Queen, right? I'll buy her for one dollar. I, I feel like they're not gonna hear me out on this. I'm just saying, I got a dollar, guys! Fire up Madam Queen, you cowards! Anyway, nearly a year after the sale, on June 23rd, 2000, 2926 would be moved by the Messer Construction Company to a siding on the BNSF Railway, which was just south of Manal Boulevard. This was mainly just to get her out of the way until the society could figure out exactly how they were gonna go about what they planned on doing. Because, indeed, the plan was to restore her to operating condition. In May of 2002, she would be moved again by BNSF to her current location, which is near the intersection of 8th Street and Haynes Avenue. It was at that place that she underwent a complete restoration to operating condition by the society. This process took nearly 20 years to actually accomplish. I've repeatedly stressed how expensive and time consuming it is to bring a steam locomotive back into operation in the modern day. It is, it is a monumental undertaking. And given how large 2926 is, it was not an easy feat, and it was downright expensive. But they kept at it that whole time. And restoration was finally completed, quite recently, in July of 2021. It was at that point that she would become the largest operating Northern in the United States. And while she was being restored, on February 11th, 2016, 
House Memorial Bill 100, which was introduced by Don L. Tripp, a member of the New Mexico House of Representatives for District 49, was adopted by the New Mexico Legislature. This would recognize 2126 as New Mexico's steam locomotive, and a representative of the railroad's contributions to the economic and cultural growth and stature of New Mexico. The total cost in terms of man-hours and financial input to make this happen will involve over 166,000 hours of labor by volunteers, and they would wind up spending over three million dollars to get this locomotive operational. It was, it was a project. But on July 24th, 2021, 2926 moved under her own power for the first time in 68 years. And since then, she's been used pretty sparingly, all things considered. Even though she's well-loved, it's hard to get Class 1s to authorize the use of steam locomotives in the modern day, especially when they're not actually owned by them. Union Pacific allegedly will only allow their own steam locomotives to run on their lines, which... Look, look, guys, guys, guys! Let's not be difficult about this. You know, you can't actually charge private owners for potential damages to your track, right? Like, there's a way to do this to make it fair. I'm just saying. On May 6, 2023, 2926 visited a nearby brewing company for a fundraiser, which was a distance of about uh, four blocks. Yeah, she didn't go very far. And the same visit happened again later that same year in August. On September 30th, 2023, 2926 returned to the main line and underwent a two and a half mile excursion to the Albuquerque Rail Yards to attend the New Mexico Railroad Days event. And she's been listed on the National Register of Historic Places since October 1st, 2007. And from what I can tell, it just seems like lately the society is just having trouble getting permission to actually do proper excursion runs. It's the same issue a lot of heritage steam locomotives are running into lately. Those type of long distance runs the locomotives like 611 and 4449 used to do way back in the day are really hard to get clearance for because the Class 1s are being very difficult about this. Union Pacific gets a lot of attention because of their own steam locomotives, but like I said, they only run their own. They're a lot more difficult towards privately owned engines, and I just... Guys. Just let her run. She is a northern. Let her spread her wings and fly, for goodness sakes. I hope the society will reach out to some Class 3s that might be in that area, as the smaller railroads are usually a lot more receptive to allowing this, since it tends to bring much-needed attention to their own business. But for now, 2926 will have to dig her heels in and wait, while I'm sure the society is working hard to find a place to effectively run her. In any event, she is in good hands and kept in very good condition. So I imagine she's not going anywhere anytime soon, but I think that's at least half the problem. She's not going anywhere. Anywhere. At least not very far, and I'm just... I'm just frustrated. Please, somebody, anybody, let her run. Goodness. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Lord Off 444, Mark Holding, Murder Drones Doll, A Person 723, DM Travel Typhoon, Royal Hunter 2860, Isafer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Hannah Bird, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Will Jack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Joshua Long, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Hayden DeGrow, Travis Delinsky, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Arizona Hot Rail, Liam Wright, Mr. Sleepy, and Dr. Razor 78. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I'll be well upon farewell.